let's go into NVIDIA, company formerly in the trillion dollar uh, club, <laughs> now down to a measly $985 billion in, uh, in value. Matt, do we really need another AI ecosystem part? I mean, like, what is this? Like, I just got used to DGX. What the yeah. Is <laughs> I'll tell you what. So here's another way to ask it. Do we need another server vendor? Uh, right? <laughs> I mean, man, these guys are incredible. As if, like, I feel like this was, you know, somebody who intercepts a football and kind of dives into the end zone, right? That was, that was, um, Jensen at Computex, and it gave an amazing two-hour um, keynote, and I usually can't last more than 10 minutes, but he was fascinating. Um, and, you know, one of the things he announced was the, um, was this MGX. It's a, it's a reference design. It's a 1U, 2U, server design built around NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA Grace Hopper or NVIDIA with, uh, with Intel as well. Um, and it's designed for, you know, it's designed for, um, OEMs and ODMs to go design their own their own platforms. I mean, it, it feels to me kind of like based on the openness of it and the adherence to um, uh, OCP, Open Compute, it feels like it really is kind of designed for cloud and, and hyperscalers, um, especially since with the uptake of the ODMs, uh, Tyan, Asus, and a few others. Um, but it's, uh, I'll tell you what, the, the hits just don't stop with these guys. I know. Um, they do not stop. Um, and it really, I was, I was using this as a kind of a, a tee up for the larger, just, you know, does NVIDIA, are they showing any signs of slowing down? And I just haven't seen it yet. Paul, I'm sure you have, you know, um, some thoughts seeing that you're Mr. AI, but um, holy heck, if we weren't live, I'd say another uh, one. Yeah, I, I, th I think uh, MTX is probably going to be you know, one of the volume products, and it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be uh, probably used a lot more than what they, they think it's going to be used. And uh, it's uh, not as costly as DGX, and so I think it's going to see a lot more volume than they expect. Matt, you mentioned Grace Hopper, and, you know, I caught some news and shared a tweet earlier this week. Um, um, it was between SoftBank and NVIDIA, and um, SoftBank's going to have exclusive access with uh, leveraging Grace Hopper um, for virtualized RAN um, deployments where um, distributed unit, you know, basically kind of maxes out the capabilities of a traditional GPU. So, I mean, Pat, I'm, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I, I find it intriguing because they're combining GPU and CPU to accomplish this with Grace, Hop with Grace yeah. Hopper. So. Yeah. yeah, and they actually announced, um, yeah, you're right. And uh, that that Grace Hopper is interesting because it is, it's it's ARM-based, right? CPU, yeah. CPU, shared coherent memory. Um, uh, they have the NVLinks built into it, so GPU to GPU. I mean, this is a, and in, at one point, I, and I don't know if it was a Freudian slip or some other slip, but he referred to Grace Hopper as an AI supercomputer instead of an AI super chip. Um, which I thought was really interesting. And they're looking at, you know, when they, when they talk about, uh, when they talk about AI and they talk about the data center, they're talking about, they're talking in much more abstract terms, right? The, the data center is the, is the server now, is the compute platform. It's no longer nodes within, um, you know, your, your workloads are distributed everywhere across. Uh, and, and if you think about the thousands of servers in the data center, they're viewing those as, you know, just different elements on a motherboard, if you will. Um, it's a it, his his vision is so far out in front of everybody else. Yeah, uh, it makes me wonder, like, where you know how everybody lines up behind that or competes with that. There are a lot of things going on in the industry right now. Nobody likes it when somebody makes most of the money. There's always a <laughs> yeah. a, a reaction. DGX Cloud was a great example where. Uh, you know, Jensen was really talking about, hey, really want to do to the AI market what we did to the gaming market, mm -hmm. where we create the value, we're creating the experience, and then it gets fulfilled by partners. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine where all the money is, right? I mean, and and so they brought up this thing called DGX Cloud, yeah. which is sold by NVIDIA salespeople, uh, invoiced by NVIDIA salespeople, and fulfilled 
<laughs> by uh, GCP, Oracle, and Azure. Well, guess who didn't take on DGX Cloud? AWS, right? Uh, some of the shrewdest uh, cloud business folks out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, by the way, you get the DGX Cloud sold by NVIDIA and fulfilled through the channel. Yeah. Uh, and then you put some uh, of frameworks and models on it, you know, generative AI stuff. So you're paying NVIDIA for certain models yep. uh, as well. I think we talked about this on the last podcast. I mean, it's like it's like genius, maybe a little bit evil genius. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but we'll see. And hey, guess what? What happens when you're putting an entire system together is you also get networking, right? Yeah. And eh, we don't need this. You know, Marvel or Broadcom stuff right now. We're just gonna kind of create our own lossless Ethernet uh, interconnect, which they talked about, which was interesting because they were all about fiber channel uh, up until uh, up until this this point. So you can imagine the industry reaction. Uh, but what Nvidia has shown over the last decade, you want to try to make this an open standard, CUDA versus OpenCL. Good luck. Right. Find me, chase me, right? And they just keep cranking, 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 cranking. Uh, AMD has shown they can they can bring in a very capable hardware platform, right? Very capable. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons why uh, AMD is having such success in the uh, let's say the top ten supercomputers is because they they write their own stack, yeah. right? They're not. They're not leveraging off of CUDA or any libraries that that go into that, yeah. and that's that's where AMD is having uh, it, its its success. So, uh, to put a good competitive front to Nvidia on on AI, you got to have the right hardware, the right software, the right library, and the right services, and the right networking. Uh, we'll see what tricks uh, that come up with storage, but right now, as we're about to dive in, uh, mm -hmm. NVIDIA is leveraging uh, both pure storage and vast data uh, for the highest performance um, for for their clusters and their cluster of clusters. I always like to say clusters. I remember when clusters was a, a bad thing? It's clusters. <laughs> It still is. Hey, you know, it's more, you just said something that's so fascinating, Pat, though, and that, this is what makes NVIDIA more impressive. In an era of open source, where open source rules the data center, these guys are killing it with a proprietary <laughs> stack. <Yeah. laughs> Holy heck, you got to love it. You got to love it. Ah, the genius. They're looking more like Apple every day. Really? Uh, they really are. Yeah. And, and you can't beat uh, Jensen's argument about power. Yeah. No. Oh. Other than, I mean, the reason the GPU, quite frankly, is so good, particularly at training, the model shifts so much. Mm -hmm. um, and all of NVIDIA's, you know, A100, stuff like that, they have ASICs on it, right? They have tensor cores. Those are special blocks. I think they're four-bit blocks mm -hmm. to do very specific. But, but the beauty of the GPU is its flexibility. Yeah. And the fact that it's, you know, 10x faster in training than a CPU, which is the ultimate in software flexibility. Um, and they bridge the gap of complexity with with CUDA uh, mm -hmm. uh, between the two. No, it's a we're going to be talking about uh, NVIDIA for a long, long time. And I just can't wait. Right. To, to see how the industry kind of lines up. And uh, I love it. And sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. I mean, Apple has like 90% of the industry profits of smartphones, yeah. uh, yet they only have 20% market share. That's right. right. Yeah. That's where we are. Hey, hey, I'll share a quick little yeah. anecdote. So I actually interviewed for a job with Jensen many years ago. Uh, it was for the, uh, the, um, the HP account manager position. I did not get that opportunity, but it was fascinating. It was however many years ago that was 25, yeah. 30 years ago, but you know, just a just a really, really smart guy with just tremendous vision and, you know, the willingness to invest in something for years mm -hmm. before there's a payback. And yeah. that's sort of unheard of. And, yeah, like 10 and, years and, all yeah. in. 